This afternoon, Scott's going to talk to us about aspects of asset allocation and correlations in portfolio construction. Scott's an independent financial planner based here in, in Brisbane. He has five years' experience as a financial planner after spending his early working life in education. He's completed his Master of Commerce, an MBA, and Master of Financial Planning degrees. He's a regular contributor to Alan Kohler's Eureka Report, which I think many of us enjoy reading. And he's written the book, which is like available outside of the stand, High Income Investing, published by Wilkinson Publishing Company. Gives me much pleasure to ask Scott to speak to you this afternoon on asset allocation and correlations in portfolio construction. Thanks, Scott. Thanks very much for the opportunity to come along today. I've already presented the um, uh, session on Sunday and I recognise a lot of people and I, I really enjoyed that session, so uh, I hope that this will be uh, enjoyable as well. I want to present this from two perspectives, two practical perspectives, both of which I think are reasonably relevant. One of them refers to the future fund and other related funds that money has been set aside for, you know, the education endowment, money set aside for uh, infrastructure projects. And really, this is the biggest portfolio in Australia. So I want to look at the theoretical things that we talk about today in terms of the practical context of what the professionals in charge of a $50 billion plus portfolio are actually doing. The second aspect that I want to talk about today from, is from the perspective of what if investment mark, what if growth assets fell in value by another 30%? And this is not a cheery thought at all. Um, but when we look at the reality of how assets and markets have performed in the past, it's something is that investors that you know, is a always a possibility. You know, we've seen markets fall by large amounts at different times. And there are arguments both ways, and I'm not making the argument in any way, shape or form that this will happen, but just that if investors were comfortable with their possibility, we've planned for a worst case contingency, uh, if markets only fall by 15%, we're thrilled, and if the opposite happens and markets go up in value, of course, we're in a very strong position. So the idea being if we can cope with a worst case scenario, you know, then we're in pretty strong, we're in a really robust sort of situation. I want to start with a couple of concepts that are important in understanding the idea of, of correlations, which is a bit of a uh, mathematical sort of weasel word, understanding what that means, and also understanding what volatility means in a portfolio sense. And I'm really keen, if, as I'm going through, there'll certainly be time for questions at the end, but if, if it's that I haven't explained a concept clearly, uh, please feel free to um, put your hand up or throw a water bottle or stop me and ask for more clarity. So I'm really keen that the, the concepts be understood as we go through. So if there is a problem with that, let us know. And then at the end we have uh, a chance for more, more questions at that time. So the two mathematical concepts that I want to get to start with are, and I know that like this is just about a threat talking about mathematical concepts after a, a, a lunch and the early afternoon session, but there are two. There are only two that we need to concern ourselves with. One is what the idea of correlations. We often hear this concept that you know, one asset class is correlated or not correlated to another. What does that really mean? How practical is it? Um, and, and how do we use that? The second, as well as correlations, the second then is standard deviations, because they're the, the common measure of volatility in the way we look at you know, portfolios, both at a, like an investment level and an overall level. You know, so just a sense of what that means, so we can then understand what we're talking about when we talk about you know, how do these correlations work and how they affect the volatility of a portfolio. <coughs> so the idea of, a cor of correlation is it's the way two things, two, two series of numbers effectively, are related to one another. The best way is probably to look at it graphically. If 
if we say this is the performance of one asset class over time, any, another asset class then can have three, three broad relationships. One is it can be like perfectly correlated to this, and that would mean that it would move in exactly the same way as this asset class or investment. So, you, know, you would expect it to move very, very similarly. An example of investments that might move like that might be two really highly related shares. You know, for example, BHP and Rio. You know, their price performance being in the same sector, similar operations would be very, very similar. <clears throat> the opposite of that is to say that theoretically you could have two, two series of numbers that are completely uncorrelated. They move in completely opposite fashion. So you know, one might move up and down, the other might be opposite. Now, there's no, no real practical examples of that in the investment world because if there would, life would be so simple. You know, if we assume that these two investments had a similar long-term return, you'd own half of each and you'd have a nice, smooth, straight-line investment return. But the reality is that there aren't quite you know, these wonderfully... Um, uncorrelated investment returns. Also, these are negatively correlated. The third example is investments that simply move with no degree of relationship between each other. So they say they have no correlation. So three things. Highly correlated, they move together very similarly. No, no correlation, there's just simply no relationship and negatively correlated, they move in an opposite way. And the way correlation coefficients work is that they range from a value of 1, 0, a negative 1. So 1 means that they are correlated, they move very much in lockstep. 0 means that there is no noticeable relationship between the two. Negative 1 would be those ideal you know, un uncorrelated sort of assets. I've managed to lose. Ah, right in front, hiding in the black part of the carpet. <clears throat> so that's the idea of correlations, this, you know, positive one to negative one through zero. <clears throat> the second, the second um, area that we want to look at is standard deviations. And all the standard deviation does is it measures the spread of returns in investment class. The wider the spread of returns, the higher the standard deviation of you know, the investment class or the investment or the portfolio. You know, so, for example, Australian shares, they have a, an average return generally comes up around 12%. They generally come up with a spread of a standard deviation returns of 14%. What that means 